What's cracking guys, Omar Esau here. I got a special video for you today featuring someone I highly respect, Cody Lefevre, uh, someone that I've known, chatted with for at least a year and a half. We hung out in California. Myself, him, Barquan, and Silent Mike nearly got involved in like a big trouble in little China type scenario. That's another story, but the video today is a big one. It deals with a lot of different topics. Originally, we're going to do a collaborative video where he was going to talk about breathing, but he's like, man, if I talk about breathing, I got to talk about bracing, I got to talk about total body tension. So this is a very comprehensive video. I've talked about a couple of these topics in passing, but Cody goes in depth. He's very cerebral. He thinks about this shit. I highly respect him. I like the content he puts out. I think he's underrated. You should check out his channel. If you like this video, make sure you like this damn video. He's going to talk about all those three things and how they're interrelated. If you want to lift more weight, you should know how to breathe properly, brace properly, and you should know about total body tension. So without further ado, I'll let Cody take it away. Hey, Cody Lefevre here. Today we're going to do a video about whole body tension and abdominal bracing. Coming to you from my garage gym, Omar asked you to make a video. Figured we'd talk about those things. First, a little bit about me. You may recognize me from such events as the American Cup at the LA Fit Expo, where I told 1466 at 166 pounds. Came in a little bit fat. Don't shame me for that. But, uh, you know, I've got a 507 squat at 166 pounds, a 347 bench in competition, a 380 bench right here in my garage gym, and a 635 deadlift in gym. So that's pretty good. Today we're going to talk about the deadlift. We're going to use some examples from my competition history and hopefully give you a little bit of tips and tricks to help you be able to create more tension with your body and your lifts and then also improve your bracing so then that way your lifts look a whole lot better and you can get a whole lot stronger. Now we're going to go over what I'm talking about with just a few examples. On the top, we've got a body that is 100% braced, represented by the ruler, and on the bottom, a body that has no bracing at all, represented by the rope. Now watch the way that the bar travels as the hip and knee extension produces force on the bodies. The braced one moves the bar a whole lot longer. Whoa! It's a really simple concept to understand when you're looking at it like that, but let's look at it like a deadlift. So now as the knees and the hips come to extension, the hips are going to raise up vertically as they come forward. Now the shoulders are going to raise up vertically as well, but as they come back, so then the body comes in line. However, if the torso isn't properly braced, then it's not going to work out that way. The distance traveled by the shoulders is going to be less than the distance traveled by the hips. We're going to look at what this looks like with an actual example. The first example that we're going to see here is one of the rope, so no bracing. I attempt 600 pounds in this competition first time, and I want you to look at my shoulders and my hips. So the rate that my hips raise is a lot faster than my shoulders. My shoulders are losing the race. We're going to look at it in slow motion. So bummed I didn't get the lift, let's look at it and learn from this lift. I start with almost no bracing. You could see immediately my hips shot up and my shoulders began losing the race of distance traveled. The bar gets above my knees and I just didn't have the strength to recoup that distance. I had lost it from the start due to poor bracing. Now we're going to look at an example just a few months later of a lift I had made. This is 6'11", so 11 pounds heavier. I start and it comes up no problem. One of the easiest deadlifts I feel I'd ever done and it was an all-time PR for me. Now we're going to look at a lift that's somewhere in the middle of those two. The problem here, some would argue, lies with my lockout. However, the argument against that, and the argument I think is correct, is that it's just my poor bracing, which doesn't give me a good position once I get to the point where I need to lock it out. In this one, I just happened to get to that point that I could just barely, barely grind through the lift because my back had been strong enough to really pull my shoulders back and complete the lift. However, I wouldn't have found myself in that position had I started properly braced. We'll slow the clip down a little bit more and take two more looks at it. Watch my shoulders and hips. As I initiate the lift, my hips raise at a rate that's faster than my shoulders. Now, if I had 100% bracing like the ruler example, then the force applied would have been direct. But the issue here is that my abs are a soft structure and when not properly braced, they will absorb some of that force. Remember, force moves like water through your body. It's going to move in the path of least resistance. And if you are not properly braced, and if you're not creating enough whole body tension, that force is going to move in places you do not want it to go. It's going to create an inefficiency in your lift. 
This third example I like best because it shows you that sometimes what you think is wrong with the lift isn't necessarily the problem. By correctly addressing this as a bracing problem and not a lockout problem, I went from 600 pounds to 635 pounds on my deadlift in less than a year. Let's talk about ways that you can improve your abdominal bracing and your whole body tension. The first thing I had to do was get my breathing back under control. So what you're going to see here is proper diaphragmatic breathing. This is improper breathing. I'm breathing shallow breaths into my chest. This is not what you want to do. What you want to do is put one hand on your chest and one on your stomach. As you breathe, you're going to try to make your abdominal wall expand. This is going to help you improve your ability to have abdominal bracing. Once you've mastered this laying on the ground, you can go to sitting in a chair and then go to standing up and then go to when you're actually lifting. This is all about practice. So if you cannot properly breathe this way using your diaphragm, you're not going to be able to properly brace your abdomen. You're not going to be able to really apply enough tension in your body to channel that force where you want to go. So this is where it all starts, you guys. Let's talk about some other ways. We've talked about how to improve our breathing so we can improve our lifting. Let's talk about how to improve our bracing so we can improve our lifting. We're going to do that by using the vacuum pose and the pregnant belly pose. So the vacuum pose, I mean, just suck in as hard as you can. It's easy. Just try to pull the belly button into the spine. And I mean, like, you get a little bit thin here. But we're going to do a pregnant belly pose. We're going to push out as hard as we can and just like try to pretend like we went on a perma bolt for a little bit too long. And this is going to help control our abdominal wall and just dial into the ability to brace a little bit better. Once you put the belt on, huh? Use the right cues. So oftentimes we're told cues maybe like spread the floor for the squat, but if that's not the problem you're having in creating whole body tension, then you don't really need to use that cue. The cues that you use should be specific to where you're having the problem utilizing and really creating whole body tension. So if you don't have a problem with knee cave, or if your hips aren't necessarily an issue, then maybe spread the floor isn't a good cue for your squat. Maybe if you're having a whole lot of chest collapse in your squat, pull the bar around you might not be a good cue. So you need to make sure they're using the right cues that are going to help you with those lifts. Some of my favorite cues. First up, we've got torso tight. This is to remind me to stay more upright in the squat by squeezing my abs and squeezing my lats and bracing those parts of my torso that want to bend under a heavy load, thoracic spine and the abdomen. My go-to bench cue, another eccentric phase cue, rip and row, a reminder to pull the bar apart as I'm pulling it into me, activating my biceps and lats, controlling the eccentric phase of the lift so that I can stick the landing and press from the most optimal position possible on my chest. This second bench is a great example of not having proper bracing. I cannot control the eccentric phase. The bar lowers faster than what I can control it. It gets into a bad starting position and I can't lock it out. My lockout wasn't the problem. is because I wasn't properly braced, just like the issue I was having with my deadlift. One of my favorite movements for figuring out the control of abdominal bracing and whole body tension is a pal-off press. So this little guy right here, all we're going to do is just hold it in tight to our chest, have it anchored off to the side, a little bit of band tension right there, and we're going to just press it away from us. So the tension on this band is going to want to pull me that way, but by bracing my abs and creating whole body tension, I resist the pull of that band. And that is going to be awesome for translating into your squat and your deadlift and even your bench. The better you can brace, the better you can lift. This little guy, we're going to put this on. Now, the biggest error when people put their belt on is they like suck in and they get really tight and they put this belt on and they use a rack and they're just like, no, we're not going to do that. Because the reason why is you're not really bracing, you're just like, squishing your guts in and it's really hard to brace properly that way so your belt should be i mean tight but not like ridiculous like i can still get a piece of my hand in there and when you do that what we're going to really be able to do is fact factor in the breathing breathing into our stomach but then once you can breathe in your stomach and then you push out with that pregnant belly pose uh, i'm really braced now get underneath the bar whew. PR City. In this video, we talked about diaphragmatic breathing, abdominal bracing, and creating whole body tension. And once you start applying those things to your training, you're going to get a whole lot stronger with even just a little bit of improvement on those three things. 
Make sure you practice the vacuum pose, the pregnant belly pose, and use the paloff press to help improve your ability to have the bracing and the tension and the breathing that you need to get stronger. I'm Cody Lefevre. Thanks for watching the video. Check out my channel. That's it guys, that's the video. Shout out to Cody for doing this video. If you want to see more Cody, make sure to like this damn video, subscribe to his channel, and comment in the comment section below. We want the fever to let me know, and also probably the topic that you'd like covered. Thanks for watching, I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace!